Yeah, it's time for a brand new edition of the Gimme the Hot Sauce podcast. It's been an exciting week. I want to thank all our loyal viewers and subscribers out there. Make sure when you follow us on whether it's uh, YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Our audience is growing, Stacey King, and we're uh, excited about it. You know what? Special shout out to all our listeners, our loyal listeners, our new listeners, people who had just found us recently. We had just got our 100,000th download what a what an accomplishment Ooh. what a, say what is that whispers timmy whispers Ooh. is back yeah hey, hey, you know what you don't saw the numbers spike when i'm gone uh yeah you know yeah, what? i wasn't gonna say anything i don't know if it's a coincidence or no, not. i don't know either <laughs> but but special special shout out to everybody our loyal listeners everybody who listens to the show weekly uh it's a testament to you guys uh that you've been with us this whole year we're only a little bit over a year uh into this and you know for all the guys who you know it started off rocky but we, we got our footing, and now we've, we've got ourselves on, on the right track, and now we're having a lot of fun doing it. So there's two venues. You've got the audio version that you can listen to on iTunes, uh, Podbean. Timmy, give Spotify. me some more. Spotify. Stitcher. Stitcher. Pandora Music. iHeart. Yes. Amazon. All that's the audio version. But if you happen to be sitting at your desk and you're bored and you didn't want to get on there and, you know, most people sometimes like to surf the Internet, just go to uh, our, our podcast channel and uh, give me the hot sauce on YouTube on YouTube. And when you get to the YouTube, we're trying to build America. We're trying to build <laughs> our YouTube channel. And if you want to see the live version, the tape version of us in studio, which you're also hearing on the audio version, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share it with all your friends. And most important, subscribe to the channel so you'll know when the show is coming out every week and you'll be ready to get in there and listen to another blazing episode of <laughs> Give Me the Hot Sauce. And, and one more thing, America, and she'll like it too. <laughs> <laughs> I know people really enjoyed DeMar DeRozan last Great week. Interview. He was a fantastic guest, uh, open, relaxed. He told us a lot of stuff that, you know, he said a couple of questions you'd never heard before. So he yeah. was happy to jump on. And we got a special guest for you today. His fellow running mate, his fellow guy who's headed to Cleveland for the All-Star Game. The voting's not done yet, but you know, DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine will be on that Eastern Conference squad. Actually, they don't do East-West anymore. They draft the teams. But both of them are going to be headed to Cleveland as NBA All-Star. And Zach Levine is our special guest. He's going to join us in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes after we talk a little Bulls. We're going to, have, going to have Zach on. It's going to be fun to catch up with him, Stace. Well, it's you know, again, this is this is a kid I've seen since he, he came into this league, you know, as an 18-year-old. And just watch him develop. I, I watched him from afar in Minnesota. was always, you know, enthusiastic about his athleticism. You know, where could he go as far as being a basketball player with that kind of Michael Jordan athleticism? And when he got here and I was able to see him on an everyday basis, um, you remember, he came here with an ACL injury. So he had to wait a little bit right. before the fans got a chance to see him. And, you know, we traded Jimmy Butler for him and we were able to get Chris Dunn, you know, Lowry Markin, which turned out to be we drafted Lowry at the seventh pick. And then we, you know, Zach Levine. A lot of people wanted Andrew Wiggins. You know, a lot of people wanted an established mm -hmm. person, Carl Anthony Towns. But... I always liked Zach Levine. I, I thought, you know, because his ability to play point guard, play the two guard, the way he can shoot the basketball, come down off pin down screens, catch and shoot, it just his athleticism is off the chart. And then when he came back from that ACL injury, I know a lot of Bulls fans were skeptical because, oh, we just, you know, Derrick Rose, we just got over the Derrick Rose, you know, ACL injury, and we're going to go through that again. And when he came here, I'm telling you what, this kid is one of the hardest working kids. When you say gym rat, he, you look up a gym rat in encyclopedia, you'll see Zach Levine's face. I mean, this kid spends hours working on his craft year round. Um, and he really relished the chance to come here and be the man. You know, he wanted to be the guy you could tell when he first got here. Uh, he's shown, you know, great growth since he's been every here. Every year. Every yeah. year he's, he's gotten better at different areas. Um, he's become that leader, the face of the franchise. And it's an opportunity this year. You know, people kept saying, well, he can't win. He can't win. And Zach's not a winner. He's only cares about stats. You know, that's a bunch of bullshit. Okay. I'm going to be the first one to say that. Um, the kid wants to win. You know, it's not his fault that he never had talent. We said this last week. It's not his fault that there was not enough talent around him to win. You need talent to win. One guy, Michael Jordan, for seven years didn't win. OK, and, and no one said Michael Jordan cares about stats and he, you know, he's a one dimensional player. It was, you know, Michael needs help. Michael needs help. It was no different with Zach. And finally, 
you know, with the new organiz- you know, new front office, they were able to put some pieces around Zach. They went out last year, got Vooch at the trade deadline. We gave up some quality young players to get Vooch. Right. But that was the start of where we are now. You know, Vooch was the first piece. Get another all-star pair with an all-star. Then you come back this year, they revamped the whole st- the whole team. I mean, I mean, there's no one left from that team with exception of Kobe White, Zach Levine, and Pat Williams from right. last year's team. Well, you don't really count Voots because Voots came halfway through the season. But as far as the, the mainstay guys, there's only three guys. So this is a completely different roster. Now you put talent around this kid, Mark, and now you see what he's done. He's putting up basically the same numbers he was doing when the team wasn't winning, and he's still one of the most elite scorers in the game. Zach Levine is enjoying winning. He said that's the best thing. Obviously, the first chance to get to the playoffs, he's looking forward to that. And his te- his partnership with DeMar DeRozan has just worked perfectly, better than anybody could have anticipated when the deals were made. And speaking of winners, we, we talk about that all the time in sports. We also talk about it in business and in the legal profession. And chances are, if you live anywhere in Chicagoland, you've seen our guy Howard Ankin on a bus, train, billboard, or maybe a TV commercial with a famous Chicago athlete or broadcaster like Stacey King. Howard is everywhere. Maybe so, a closet. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been injured at work, in a car, truck, or rideshare accident, make sure to call Howard. He's a third-generation attorney from Chicago, and his number, an easy one to remember. It's area code 312 million. That's our guy, Howard Ankin, 312 million. So... If you need some help in the legal profession, make sure to do that. Tim's been working on on his business. You're off in Arizona last week. We missed you last week, buddy. Yeah, but I didn't come back as Larry the Lobster. Which yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah I was a little that. disappointed. You look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> I had to about as the pale song. as I've ever seen you. <laughs> I, I didn't want to hear any Larry jokes. Yeah, so. but you know what, Tim? That's that's your mo. You go out yeah. there, you get a little sun, you come back. But now, you know, I'm not used to this this like mayonnaise look. Like, I, I'm expecting you to come back, you know, Man bright nice red. <laughs> wow. I'm not used to you're it. A, you're a trendsetter now. Yeah, you got you that mayonnaise come back, look hey, going. Listen, you got that mayonnaise look pasty. <laughs> you know, like, the, you know, you got like coffee and cream, you know, the white. Oh, come on, man. Well, in two and a half weeks, uh, I should be pretty roasted. I hope I so, back. man. I, I'm uncomfortable looking at you right now. Uh, I mean, sorry seriously. To let you down. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> I was expecting you to be as red as a lobster. Were you going to Dubai or something? Is that what you were talking right, about? Right, Dubai. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Big well, money, the desert. Big money. Are, you, are you playing in that golf tournament out there? What, what's what's going on? <laughs> no, big stakes with the sheiks and everything. Yeah, just doing some uh, dune bugging out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, get him, Pavel. D- DJ Pavel's DJ playing. DJ Pavel it. On, on the sticks over there. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, he's 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 gonna go to 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 Y. He's just gonna have a good time, and he's he didn't even ask us to go. Yeah, you know, <laughs> didn't ask us to go. Hey, you guys busy? You guys want to come over with it? But he is taking Frank Farmer. And we're bringing the hot sauce, you know, too. yeah, you bring some hot sauce, of course. Okay, All right. bring well, it I'll to believe. that part of the world. Okay, we'll believe. It. I'll believe it. You know, I believe it when I see it. Hey Tim, did you see what uh, what Stacy made for dinner yesterday on his day off? Oh, yeah, I get cooked every, some uh, chicken on the okay, Traeger grill. Okay. I get every single dinner. Okay, first of all, first of all, America. As much as I would like to sit here and lie <laughs> and take credit, because you know I've been known to do it. Okay, I've switched teams. You know, Alabama. I, you know, I went to Georgia, ladies and gentlemen. Georgia was number yeah, one. Right. We're number yeah, one. Okay, front runner. I don't remember Oklahoma, but we're number one. Georgia, go Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I would like to sit here and lie, Mark, and say I took credit for the beautiful meal that was made. Yes. Okay, it looked good. It looked very good. We, it was very. Our tasty. invitation must have got yeah. lost. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. Especially <laughs> yours, Tim. You will never see an invitation. Okay, you're just getting pictures. Okay, that's more than what you give me. You're like, hey, hey, we're gonna, you know, hey, can we have some ribs over your house? I'll call you never hear from him. yeah well, so i'll send you pictures at least okay so the credit <laughs> has to go out america because i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you okay the credit has to go out to me i just oh, want to okay. take this time <laughs> to thank me okay that's all i want to say america thank me okay no i'm, I'm lying i'm like I'm, I'm getting the side eye right now for my girlfriend she's sitting over here to my left we don't have her on camera but uh don my girlfriend don is a excellent level five chef okay she loves to grill she wow. cooks oh my god she is an amazing cook. you won the lottery stacy yeah you know what I've been shortchanged for many, many years. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh I've been no. shortchanged. I, I thought I had full. I thought I had the full packages before, but I realized I've been shortchanged. I, I got the full package now. The total package, America. I'm so much. I'm so glad I found this woman. You know, I helped her. She was asking for some money from groceries, and I found her at Mariano's. And she said, "Hey, would you mind helping me buy some soup?" I said, "Sure, come on." So I helped her 
buy some soup and some groceries. So now she's cooking for me. Wow, what a... I'm lying, America. I'm going to get beat when I get home because she is a black belt. I just want to throw that out there, guys. A lot okay. of quality. No, seriously. Yeah. Seriously. We're joking. I'm not joking now, America. I'm telling the truth. She's a black belt. She is. She. I, I keep I keep telling her, like, the other day we were just play fighting, and she did, like, a triple kick, like, low kick, medium kick, and high kick, and almost took my head off. And I'm like, what the hell? And she goes, well, I'm Kung Fu Panda. And I'm like... Oh my god. That's goodness. not Kung Fu Panda. That's like some real, real stuff. <laughs> I and think then she so said I said one more word out of you. Yeah. So so <laughs> no, that's one those are the kind of people like, get in there and wash the dishes. I'm not washing the dishes, woman. <laughs> oh, okay, honey. Hi, what do you want me to me? You want me to put the food away too? You know? But so so she said so I, I teased her and I said, I said to her, I said, How do you know that? Like she's I've been taking martial arts since I was a little girl. And I'm like, wow, wow that's that's impressive. So so then I started teasing her and like she's got like five different names and then she's got five passports I found out so I said so I told her I said wait a minute, are you Jason Bourne's wife what, what, I mean you need to tell me something wow. and then I said are you waiting for a call to say it's go time <laughs> take everybody out <laughs> in the house run. take everybody out in the house they're all witnesses well you shouldn't have said your names on the dish so uh, I'm, that I'm, was uncool see, I'm gonna be the first one to go I'm gonna be the first one to go me and Eric oh, yeah, will be the first, first one to go because I'm, I'm, I'm a witness I'm a witness to her skill level I tell you what, whispers. At first, I thought this was going to be like a Hallmark movie, you know, the sappy love story. Now, all of a sudden, it's taking it to a whole well, different level. Let me a whole tell you something. Place. Let me tell you something. No, seriously. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Seriously, if I had to get into a scrap and she's with me, I'm not worried about anything. Like before, I'm like, I got to protect her. She's a yeah. lady. I got to protect her, which I still would. But now I know what I know about her. <laughs> I might put her out in the front. Get him, Don. Whoa. I might be behind her hair, honey. Get him. You know what I'm saying? I know that America, I know you're sitting there saying, I can't believe you just said that. But if you saw what I saw, trust me, she will like it too. <laughs> Go, on, Pablo. You know, after all this talk, I think I think whispers. You should just tilt your camera. Let yeah, let's show, show Don. Show Don, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say we're gonna or take Don the camera. Or Don just slide her chair over. Let's that slide might be over easier. Don so they can see. Come on, there's there the lovely Don. There she is, right? Don't put your hands down, Don. <laughs> Look at her, Kung Fu Panda. Woo! <laughs> so, guys, if we if we ever, because we're always worried about assassination attempts here at the Sriracha Studio, because you know we got a lot of crazy. Yeah, Tim had some disgruntled see, Tim's employees. Tim's got some in the disgruntled past. employees <laughs> that like to show up with a trench coat, no clothes on, and baby oil. So now I honestly feel safe because Don is a black belt in hip keto. <laughs> okay, that's that's the martial art. Hip okay. keto. I'm Jeet Kune Do. Okay, she's hip keto, so we are safe. So Frank Frank Farmer won't help. <laughs> no, Frank Farmer. No, Frank Farmer. All he's he's just he's just a body shield. We just hold him up. Well, somebody's got to go down. Somebody's got to go down. Somebody's got to be. We we'll use yeah. him as a shield. But we, I feel 100 safe America because Don is a black belt in hip keto and. She will put them things on you. <laughs> I'm just telling you, America. Hey, she tells me to do something. I don't even back talk anymore. I just do it. I, I used to say, oh, no, I don't feel like doing it. You know, <laughs> hey, honey, well, let's go do this. I don't feel like going. It's too cold outside. Now it's like, when? What time? <laughs> now? Okay. Okay, let's go. She got, she got me trained, America. She got wow. me trained. True Look confession. at Marcus. Marcus is a yeah. flabbergasted. True <laughs> confession, sir. From <laughs> Stacey King. I never no. thought we'd get to this point listen, in our relationship. You know, you know, listen, you know, I tell you guys, I you know, I, I, I pull legs here and there. Yeah. I joke around. But America, I'm not joking around about this hip keto. She's dead serious, boy. She yeah. she can literally, like, you know, like uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, he always takes his leg and he can put it up against the wall straight up in a doorway. She can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay, so Tim, before, so before Tim, Tim goes so, somewhere yeah. really so bad, Tim, let's, let me tell you uh, something. And, and now, for, and this is this is for you, Tim. Timmy Whispers. <laughs> yeah, he was getting ready to go somewhere. I know. I Timmy know. Whispers. You cut me off. Tim, yeah, 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 we yeah. cut you off because we know you. Yeah. You're ready to throw a grenade in the middle of the table. Well, also, Don was sitting right here and just said she could kick my head off. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to tell you. I just wanted to yeah, tell you. Before this nice, polite like, conversation uh, goes uh, sideways. Yes, I, I just wanted to tell you. I just wanted to tell you, Timmy Whispers. Now I got my own Traeger grill. But before I got the grill, <laughs> we were going to pay you a visit. Yes, we were going to come. I was going to bring Don over there and have her do her hip keto on you for lying to me and Mark about giving us ribs. But now that I got my own Traeger, America, I, that Traeger grill is for real. I'm just going to let y'all know that. And we're not getting any of this. not a shameless plug, but Traeger, if you're out there, we don't turn anything down but our collar. Wink, wink. 
I think, yeah, I think they work with a certain sponsor we're Do talking they? to. So. Oh, really? We might have to work that into it. We might have to oh. work that into it. Oh, bum, yes. bum, bum, bum. That could be clever. Breaking news. Yes, breaking news. And give me the hot sauce. Oh, All right, we got to get, get the train back yeah, on the track. Let's talk yeah, a little yeah. more basketball. Obviously, yes. we're, we're looking Sorry, forward America. to have, having Jeez. Zach on. And a, a bump in the road. Last night, we are taping the show on Thursday afternoon. Uh, the Brooklyn game, two-point game at halftime. I'll tell you what. Kevin Durant, after the game, said they were fired up because the crowd was into it. They, they lost two games to the Bulls, and they wanted to say, hey, we're here, too. They were highly motivated. I'm not saying the Bulls weren't, but they lost Derek Jones to an injury. The word on that is it's a bone bruise in his right knee. He's going to be out four to six weeks, and the Bulls are definitely going to miss his athleticism, his ability to run the floor and, and, and play defense. But at least it wasn't an ACL tear where he'd been gone for the whole season. And I, I think that kind of set the tone for the whole night. You know, you don't have Caruso. You know, you don't have Javante Green. And defensively, they really had a tough time keeping James Harden and Durant under control. Well, Mark, I mean, you, you were right. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, they came out motivated. They were 0-2 against the Bulls this year, and, and everybody now is talking about the Bulls. Bulls, number one team in the East. Yeah. They wanted to kind of send a message like, hey, now we got all three of our guys here. Kyrie is back. I didn't really think, you know, he was a big offensive factor, but I thought his presence out there created openings for everyone else because you have to worry about his ability to break down the defense mm -hmm. and get to the paint. Even though he didn't shoot the ball particularly well, his presence made the Bulls' defense have to play honest. And so Kevin Durant and I thought James Harden probably had his best game, both those guys. Kevin Durant always plays well against us, but I thought James Harden, he got calls early. I really have to be – listen, I don't, I'm not one of these guys that complain about the officials. Um, I thought the officiating was terrible, and uh, especially against two of the best teams in the NBA playing. Um, you know, Bulls players were, you know, three fouls in the first quarter. I mean, it was like – it was it was unbelievable, and I don't I don't know who was calling the game. I don't know which officials it were, whether the young officials or older officials. Older officials tend to let the players play and decide the game. When you get mm -hmm. these younger guys out here, it's almost like they're calling a college game. And you got to remember, you're in the NBA. The players are bigger, faster, and stronger. You have to let the players dictate how the game is going to be played. And I thought the Bulls had one hand behind their back in that first half in the first quarter defensively. Guys couldn't play as physical as they wanted. And I thought James Harden got those calls that everybody was complaining about before they put yeah. the supposedly yeah. James Harden rule in. He's starting to get those calls now where he just runs, initiates the contact, and throws his hands up, and he's going to the free throw line. And that's why they implemented the rule this year for him and Trey Young. And those guys have not been able to play the way that they're used to playing and they started you know started complaining about it uh, Brooklyn even went as far as sending a video into the NBA showing that he's actually getting fouled and not getting called so mm -hmm. I thought that was a the big thing in the game last night and then on you know the second part of it not coming out in that third quarter ready to play against a good team you can't come out and be lackadaisical and you know come out and think okay we're you know we're down single digits so we, we're going to get back in like they have all season long you've got to come out with a different mindset and I thought they came out flat in the third Tough schedule coming up. You got Golden State. They got Milwaukee in the future. They play Memphis, which is <laughs> Memphis has oh. won 10 games in a row. John Moran is, is on a big time roll right now. So the schedule is toughened up, and you don't want to make excuses, but the Bulls are shorthanded. You, you're missing two of your best defenders in Caruso and Javante Green, and, and that's going to have an impact, especially when you're playing some of the elite teams in the league. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, listen, I mean, every team's going through it now. You know, whether it right. be the NBA protocol or guys being hurt, um, the Bulls' depth has been one of the reasons why they've been able to be one of the best teams in the league. I mean, they haven't had – they've had a lot of guys missing. They had the most guys missing as far as the NBA protocol is concerned, the number one team in the league. But the difference is they have so much quality depth at the guard position. They were able to withstand that. And then you didn't have to have DeMar and Zach out long periods of time together. One was playing, the other one was out. And then the other one came back, the other one was out. And then they were to bring them back together and made a big difference. Friday night, it's going to be the uh, Bulls and the Golden State Warriors at the United Center. And this time, you can get the local broadcast with yes. Stacy and Adam. You don't have to listen to the ESPN folks. Uh, the, you can enjoy Stacy and Adam on the call. And, you know, the Warriors are playing Thursday night in Milwaukee, <clears> and they're going to let Clay Thompson play that game. And then they're sitting him out against the Bulls. And, and we were talking before we started – I'm sure Billy Donovan will point that out, that they think they can just walk in here with two of their big guys and, and, and beat you anyway. Well, and, and that's that's what, you know, I, that's the way I look at it, you know, because I, I know, you know, the Bulls have been playing well. They've been playing better than Milwaukee. 
And, you know, you're going to play him in Milwaukee, but not play him in Chicago. And that's something, even if that wasn't the case, Mark, as a coach, that would be my motivation yeah. to tell my team, like, this is what they think of you. Like, you mm -hmm. guys are still the same Bulls of last year because we saw that last season where LeBron and guys would sit out when they were playing the Bulls. You know, Luka Doncic would sit out and then play the next, next night. But we haven't seen a lot of that this year because the Bulls have been so good. So teams have been having to play their stars in order to try to win a basketball game. So I think they look at, you know... The the situation and Steve probably said hey listen they, they probably had some kind of protocol with Clay Thompson how many because he hadn't played in two years and you got to be very careful with him as how you use him I thought they'd probably even rest him more like you know play him a couple games give him a couple games off just for the fact so he doesn't re-injure himself because he's the type of guy that wants to come back and play 40 minutes a night if you ask him he's just not physically ready and you know I think they look at maybe Milwaukee being a team they may see in the finals Maybe you want to send them a message. What would you think about Clay in his first couple of games? You know, he looks like he's moving well. His shot is always going to be good. But, you know, he's trying to adjust to the NBA speed. And, and with the headband and the hair now, he kind of looks like that Will Ferrell character. Yeah, Jackie Moon. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie Moon for the Florida Tropics. The yeah. Florida Tropics, yeah. Um, you know what? It's going to take him some time to get back into game shape. You know, the one thing he's got going for him, Mark, is he's an excellent shooter. Shooters don't lose the strike. Right. It's yeah. just their legs, you know, getting their legs underneath him because he is an actual jump shot shooter. He's not a guy that just sets shot and shoots it. He's a guy that gets up vertically and gets up and shoots the basketball. So that's the one area I think he's going to have a hard time with. His conditioning is going to be fine. It's just the fact that, you know, you get that lactic acid in your legs. He's yeah. been gone for yeah. two years. Um, you know, that makes your legs heavy. And then he's not the same defensive player that he was. They're not putting him – they used to put him on the best – the other team's best score. Right. And right now they're not doing that. They're putting him probably on the, the third best option right now to save him, to not get him out there to overextend himself defensively, which then hurts his offensive game. So you're going to see early on, they're going to put him, you know, not put him on the best player. They'll put him on the, you know, third option and then, you know, bring him along slowly. I mean, they put him right back in the starting lineup, which most teams probably wouldn't have done. But Steve Kerr is like, hey, this, he, he's a, what better option do we have? You know, this kid yeah. needs to get out there. He hasn't been out there in two years. And when he's healthy, they're a team like that you got to say, you know, is a team that can win a title again because they got they have been playing well without him this year and they look like a favorite. And now you add another shooter with Poole. Poole and, coming oh, off the bench. Oh, my goodness. Down, yeah. I mean, they, they got their low. that little pit bull, Gary Payton, is really Gary playing Payton, well, man. They've got, uh, they've got the – I mean, you're going to get Wiseman back at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, you know, Draymond Green is a, is a durable player is going to be back. Um, they're just probably being precautionary with him. But they got the tools again to come out of the West. They've already beat Phoenix. They split with Phoenix. Um, it seems like Memphis has their number, though. For yeah. some reason, in the regular season, Memphis has their number. So it'll be interesting to see how they, if they those two teams meet up later on, how that's going to work out. How about John Morant getting the clinching basket against the Warriors? And then there were the two little kids in the crowd, and they were wearing Steph Curry jerseys, so he wouldn't dap them up. He goes, uh, I'm not going to do that. Now they have a promotion where you can turn in your jerseys and get a, get a Grizzlies jersey. Oh, wow. That was a home crowd, too. Yeah. 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 You know what? Watching that kid, I, I swear, Mark, it's like looking at reincarnation of Derrick Rose. As far as the yeah, athleticism young is Rose, concerned, yeah. I mean, some of the things, the block he had against the, the Lakers where the he went up with two hands at like Top six, of the square. At like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah. I mean, literally his body, half his body was up on the on the backboard. And he was able to come down and secure the ball and then get off and go do what he has to do. He's developing an outside shot. He's he's attacking the rim like he did his first year. And the thing that makes him so dangerous now is he's he's become more offensive-minded. You know, he recognizes when his team needs a bucket and he's like, give me the ball. I'll go get the bucket. But he's still a facilitator. He's still a pass first guy mm -hmm. trying to get his teammates involved. He got to the basket and I threw a lob to the young kid, the rookie they got there. It was really nice play defense kind of closed off the lane. He threw it up for a lob. The kid had like two or three. Yeah, lobs. Zaire Williams. Yeah, he, three like three lobs. And then you got that kid, Bain, who can shoot threes. They've got a nice mixer of talent. Um, you know, De uh, Brooks, Dylan Brooks is still not 100%, but when he's out there playing, gives him toughness. Jaron Jackson is playing well. Their team, I'm telling you, at the end of the year, is going to be a team that's going to be scary. And the Bulls will play the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, part of the Martin Luther King Day celebration, NBA games, wall to wall. That's going to be a 2.30 start in Memphis. You guys get the call on that, or is that a national? That's a national. Yeah, yeah it's so a TNT We normally, game, yeah. we, I mean, back in the day, we used to get it all the time. You know, right, the right. Bulls weren't winning. Yeah. And now, the ESPN is coming and stealing games. <laughs> They're making us stay at home. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's good. It's good that the Bulls are back in the is relevant again because I've said this all, all along. You know, the NBA is not the same when the Bulls are not there. Yeah. The Knicks and the Celtics here in the Eastern Conference. Okay. When those three teams are not in the mix for championships or playoffs, it just doesn't seem right. I don't think we're going to hear Reggie Miller doing his Bane impersonation on, on Monday when you know, Desmond Bain does nah, something for the Grizzlies. No, nah, but you know what? You might hear me. I might just jump on <laughs> I might just jump on Instagram yeah, live. You just, yeah, you can just yeah, do it live. I can do it on Instagram live, you know, but you know, it, that I mean that that was some fun. We we have fun with me and Adam, we have a lot of fun with the stuff, man. Like the other night we did the uh, Aaron Neville. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Down with the game with a nationwide jingle, we have some fun, man. I mean, you know, it's it's we're unfiltered, we're unfiltered, basically. They let us have some fun, so it's a lot of fun. The NBA trade deadline about a month away, February tenth. I know a lot of Bulls fans are hoping that they can add some size, especially now with the injury to Derek Jones Jr., where he's going to be out four to six weeks, as we told you. The first trade was made today. Cam Reddish goes from the Atlanta Hawks to the New York Knicks in exchange for Kevin Knox, who was not playing for Tom Thibodeau, and a 2022 first-round draft pick that will come from the Charlotte Hornets. So, you know, it looks like Tom Thibodeau and company got a steal adding Reddish to that lineup. Yeah, I think they did get a steal because, you know, in the draft, everything's uncertain. You don't know what you're going to get in the draft. You don't know where that pick's going to lie. You're giving up a kid in Kevin Knox that obviously was not going to play in New York. The kid not, is not as long as Thibodeau was yeah, coaching. Yeah, he, you know, if you're not a Thibodeau guy, you're not going to yeah, play. Yeah, I can play. And yeah. so this kid can shoot. I'm telling you, America, listen to me when I tell you about Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox is going to be a really good player for Atlanta. He's going to be the guy that is going to hit wide open jumpers, knock down threes. He's he's athletic and get to the rim. That was a that was a that was a good trade for them. Plus the fact that they were going to have to pay Cam Reddish if he kept going on the pace that he was going. Right. And they they want that money allotted to some other different people. And so if you got to pay him, you know, a lot of money, you know, where does, you know, where does, you know, John Collins and all these other guys, you know, where, I mean, you got a lot of money invested in a lot of guys. You, know, you still got to pay DeAndre Hunter, who they think is going to be the next Kawhi Leonard type player, one of the, you know, better two-way small forwards. Um, he's going to be coming back soon. So that made it easy for them to move. Cam Reddish, they probably didn't want to do it, but they they're, they're, there's too much of a stockpile at that yeah. position. And the Knicks get a guy that is borderline superstar, going to be a superstar. I, I think Cam Reddish, with the way he plays and how he, he'll fit in nicely in New York, um, you know, he was a guy back at Duke where he was like the third option behind R.J. Barrett and then Zion Williamson. No one ever talked about him. But that kid was a highly recruited player. He hit some big shots at Duke. And then he started to come along like last year in the playoffs. He played really well, if people remember, against right. Milwaukee. Yeah, came he in and he had, he had been injured most of the season. And then DeAndre Hunter went down. They put him in the lineup and he took off. And then he's carried over to this season. So we'll see if that move kind of opens the floodgates. A lot of teams looking to try to improve their rosters because the title looks like it could be wide open this year. The Bulls in the mix in the East. Uh, the, there are a lot of teams in the West trying to improve. So it's going to be interesting to see moves that are made leading up to the February 10th trade deadline. You mentioned the nationwide jingle. You know, when it comes to insurance for your auto, home, and business, make sure you contact the king of insurance, nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic, our good buddy at jeffvuk.com. That's jeffvuk.com. And Stacy showed off the golden pipes in the last game. Uh, how are the pipes feeling today? They feel pretty good, Mark. All right. Nationwide is on your side. Very nice. Ooh. As a Thursday matinee edition of the Give Me the Hot Sauce. Tim, as we're recording. Tim, you sound a little creepy over there. Hey, I, just, I was just cheering He's like, on. Tim's like, ooh, ooh, he's over there sweating. He's making me nervous. Come on, Timmy. Timmy whispers. No, that's what you heard. That's not what I said. So I, think I don't know. I heard it. You, Unless it was Don. Problem. Unless Don was over here going, oh, oh, it sounded like whispers to me. Oh, Someone's about to get kicked in the head. You might get a kick, right? <laughs> You know, and, and Tim was busy when, when he got back from Arizona. He was, like, etching something on his glass behind us. I yes. don't know what's going on. If you're know, watching on YouTube. We're just enhancing the yeah. studios Whispers. Here. Yes. Got yeah, out a knife or something. <laughs> you started carving Some it. Some spray paint. Yeah. Let it dry and then try to so carve it out. you want to explain your artwork to the folks so, yeah, that are sure. watching on YouTube? I just bought a, a laser. And thought I'd try it out on some glass behind it. Well, who are you, Bane? <laughs> Put up the King logo. <laughs> Looks oh, great. Hey, I wish we could actually see it. Yeah, be because nice. because like it's supposed to be me, but it really doesn't look like me. It looks Whispers, like. Move well, out of the way for a second. Right, Let the yeah, folks see yeah, the artwork see. that you created. Hey, there's 
Yeah, I mean, what is that? It, it, I think you it's, know I think it's Whisper's face. Behind. I think if we turn if we turn the lights on, it'll be Whisper's see. face on there. The next edition will look Oh, better. my goodness. We, we're going to have to. We're, like America, this is what we have to deal with. When we leave him alone, he's gone for a week <laughs> or so. We come back, he's already altered the Sriracha Studios. He's taking that hot sauce money and he's oh, using it for uh, man, so Yes, nefarious. I don't know what he's doing, but we're going to have to check it out. <laughs> we're going to have to do an audit over there. I don't know what's going on over there. we got to get our money back on that work. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I've been shot. Give me the guns. Give me the guns, oh. Pablo. Ow, Lord, I've been shot. Next oh. thing you know, next week there'll be spray paint all over that thing. You yeah. Know, like, hey, it'll Mark, be, yeah. Your, your, your face is going on the glass next. We'll see how that looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll have the court jester hat instead of the crown. Oh, my goodness. You hey, guys are wild. Enough fooling around here. We got the main event coming up. Zach Levine is going to join us after a quick timeout. It'll be great catching up with Zach, talking about his great season and big things ahead for the Chicago Bulls. Give me the hot sauce. Coming at you strong. If you like hot sauce and barbecue sauce, then you are listening to the right show. Give Me the Hot Sauce has the best small batch organic sauces to spice up your kitchen. Chicago-style red sauce with a garlic twist or our St. Pat's Verde's green sauce with extra avocado and cilantro. And our King's Q. Bold, spicy, and sweet. Just like Timmy Whispers. <laughs> Use code hot sauce 21 to get 21% off your first order. That's hot sauce 21 at... 21% off, that's G-I-M-M-E, I repeat, G-I-M-M-E, the hot sauce, dot com. We have t-shirts, mugs, and other swag, too. And remember. And remember, whispers will like it, too. <laughs> Maybe he won't look like a ghost anymore after he has some hot sauce, huh? Yes, I need some. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a rough run. <laughs> Welcome back to the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. You know, Stacy always uh, ends a broadcast after a win with Drive Home Safely. And we want Zach Levine to uh, drive safely while he's uh, visiting with us here on the Give Me the Hot Sauce. Zach, you're the first guest who's actually been, well, I think Thaddeus Young was, yeah, it was that, in the back yeah, of a limo. Was, though, so, so he was okay. Yeah he was, yeah, he was in the limo. Well, thanks, yeah, thanks for joining us. I can multitask, man. I can multitask. <laughs> Hey, it's great for you to come on. We had uh, Damar on last week, and uh, he was fantastic. The partnership with you and Damar has been f just phenomenal to watch. Has this been even better than you anticipated with uh, with you and he joining forces? I think it can still get better. Um, you know, we uh, we talked in the off season and got to know each other. Our personalities really fit, and we have one goal in mind: is to help his team win. And um, you know, we've, you know, the team allowed him to play his game and they got another dog out there with me. I know that's we're going to fight each and every day. So it's a, it's been a, it's been a match made in heaven. Talk about a little bit about working and playing for coach Donovan. I know he's been big in your career since he's been here and you guys trust him yeah. to the fullest. So tell, tell the listeners a little bit about your relationship with coach Billy Donovan. I mean, it's been incredible. I mean, for everybody that knows me, I've had, so many different coaches just by circumstances in my career. And I think this has been the first coach I've really uh, connected with on a, on a level to where oh, there's been more trust and, and person to person. He cares about you more as a person than a player. And that's what I, that's what I really care for. You know, he asks you how your days, you know, how your family is, bring you to the side, you know, talk to you about, you know, life skills and life things. And that's something that you appreciate as, not only a player, but as, as a man in this league, because you have to, you know, you go through a lot. And, um, you know, for me and him, we've, we've definitely connected well, and I appreciate him. You know, Zach, you've you've improved each and every season in the league, and I know that a lot of Bulls fans were saying, yeah, but, yeah, but, when are you going to win? And you've done such a great job of leading this group, coming back and playing so unselfishly. Did you ever wonder why people were wondering – is Zach empty calories kind of player that he's not going to lead us where we need to go? I mean, I, I let certain things drive me, but I also don't listen to, you know, I don't know how much you guys cuss on the show. I don't listen to bullshit. So, um, <laughs> let it rip, baby. Yeah. It, it really, it doesn't, it doesn't concern me, man. I let certain things motivate me, but you know, that's, that's what you're placed in the league. Sometimes, sometimes you have to play the cards that you're dealt. And when you're a successful player, or a talented player and you're on a losing situation, but you're doing well, you get criticized for it. Um, 
and it, it, it hurts. I want to be a winning player and I always have been growing up and um, the circumstances that you have to try to lead your team to wins and, you know, getting help this year has been, you know, the best thing in the world for me, being on the Olympic team, having that experience with, you know, players of your level and better than you and then going out there and see how it works and, you know, how you have to sacrifice for winning and how winning cures everything. It's been, it's been great for me. So, um, you know, I, I never understood it, but, you know, I play the cards as dealt. I, I keep my head down. I keep working. I tell, you know, I try to make people uh, eat their own words. Well, and that, you know what? I, that's the one thing I, I noticed this year. I watched you this summer with the Olympic team. And the one thing I took away from that is, is that everybody knows you can score. You know you can score on anybody in the world. That's not even an issue. But I thought you recognized, like, in order for me to get in this rotation and get consistent minutes, I'm going to have to play defense. I'm going to have to do little mm-hmm. bitty things to get on the floor because we got so many guys that can score. And I thought yeah. you you did a great job fighting over screens, doing things that people may not thought you could do, and it's carried mm-hmm. over this year. I think your defense, we always talk about being a two-way player. We've always sat on the yeah. bus and talked about being a two-way player. And this year, I, I said on the air, I said, man, this kid is really showing people he can play on both ends. He's getting in front of people. And I thought that experience with the Olympic team really helped. Yeah, no, it was incredible because, you know, just like what you said, that everybody can score on that team. You're playing with the tw- some of the 12 best players in the world. So, and you almost had to figure out your roles and, and your and your, and your your minutes on that team. We had Kevin Durant, you know, who was going to be the lead scorer, getting most of the shots. And then you had guys like Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, um, you know, me, you know, you have a bunch of guys that, you know, average over 26, 27 points per game, but you're not going to be in that same role. So just for me, OK, look, coach, I'll, I'll I'll pick up and play defense all the time. I'll be the one trying to take charges or dive on the floor, which I haven't had that role before, but gave me a, a little bit of an insight to when I get back to the Bulls and on my regular team. It's uh, it's going to add a nuance to my game that I might not have to do it every single possession, you know, like I was in the Olympics. But, you know, I, hey, look, I got Bradley Beal this, you know, this game or, you know, what? Well, look, I, I got James Harden. So you go guard KD and it'll it, it'll help our team in the long run. Zach, I'm curious uh, how much you, you were involved in, in some of the offseason maneuvers. Uh, Arturis is kind of the international man of mystery. He doesn't say a lot in, in the press, and <laughs> yeah, he keeps yeah. his cards close to the vest. But, man, he turned over this roster in the span of two years. It's just uh, you and Kobe that are left from the, the original group that he inherited. Um, br- yeah. You talk about bringing in dogs. You know, Alex Caruso, Lonzo Ball, Derek Jones Jr., these guys, these guys will battle you tooth and nail. And, and how much is that... Yeah. That style of play really impacted the, the team's success on the court. Big time. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, I'm able to hear some of the things that go on. I'm At the end of the day, look, I'm a player, and I go out there, and I do my job, and I let everybody else do their job. That's what that's what we get paid to do. But um, I hear some nuances. They give me some tips on, you know, hey, Zach, do you like this guy? Or, you know, do you do you like the way this fits? Um, another guy that that is a big help, he's injured right now, that's been – you know, somebody that doesn't show up on the box score, but you miss him dearly at Javante Green, yep. a guy like that, where it's just like he's a straight dog. He'll fight you, run through a wall for you, and he makes all the little plays. So, you know, having guys like that on the roster, um, AC coming from championship winning pedigree, you know, playing with LeBron and, you know, just his IQ, <clears throat> Zoe's IQ, his feistiness, it's helped all of us. And, it, and, and it's also taught us, like, okay, there's some different – that we weren't used to playing this way. And, um, you know, that's why I say I still, I still think that we can get even better because we're still only, you know, what, 35 games in. Well, this is a brand-new team. <clears throat> Go back to the trade, when the Bulls made the trade to bring you, Chris Dunn, and then it turned out to be the Lowry marketing marketing pick. You know, when you were mm-hmm. you were the on that team with Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins, you guys had three, like a kind of a baby big three. You guys were all yeah. three <laughs> talented players. And then you get hurt with the ACL injury. And then I remember watching you in Minnesota. You played a lot of point guard. You played wherever mm-hmm. they need you to play. And then when you got hurt and then we picked you up, there was a lot of people that were like, oh, we just had this injury with Derrick Rose. And now we got another guy who's hurt in this trade. How good is Zach Levine? But what was going through your mind when you got traded from Minnesota? That was the first team to draft you and you had a great relationship yeah. with Flip Saunders, but what was going through your mind when you heard that you got traded to Chicago? I mean, I think for any young players, I, that was my first three years. I was drafted at 18. And I, I got injured at, when I was 21, so you almost 
grow up a little bit in the league your first three years because it's a brand new experience. So I was, especially being hurt on ACL, I was a little upset. But then I looked at it as a positive to where, you know, now I get to go out here and showcase, you know, my talents and be who I am. You know, not and you know, sometimes you have to play a role your first, you know, when you come into the league. And like I said, I was pretty much the third option on that team, just the way that, you know, they're the two top picks. Um, you know, you have to fit into your different roles. I was playing point guard, like you said, predominantly behind Ricky Rubio, and then I'll come in and play shooting guard. So I feel like all that experience me for now, the opportunity that presented itself for me in Chicago to come out here and, and really show who I am and all the hard work that I, I put in, you know. In the offseason, I, I don't work out like a like a number two or a number three guy. Like, I wanted to be a superstar, and, you know, I still want to be, and that's how I work, and I just wanted to uh, – I wanted to have that opportunity and, you know, you know, I was, I was ready to walk through that door. Zach, speaking of that, I wanted to ask you about your, your relationship with your father who puts you through those summer boot camps. Uh, for the, <laughs> yeah. for the viewers who don't know, maybe you could fill them in on, on your dad's athletic background and how hard he works you and motivates you to be the great player that you are. Yeah. So my dad was a, uh, former NFL player. He played a, uh, Back in the day, you know, Stacy might know this. You guys will too. The USFL was like the other right. NFL. Yep. Um, played for the Portland Breakers and then uh, played for the Seahawks for a little bit before he got injured. Um, come from really tough upbringing to San Bernardino. Um, got his family out the hood, moved to Portland and brought that, you know, into my life a little bit because obviously I didn't grow up the same way he did, but, you know, tried to instill that toughness into me. Um, and, you know, I got to give my mom credit too because she allowed him to, coach me and 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 push me to be you know the person I am today and my dad is the person I looked up to I wanted to be like him um and then getting older I wanted to be better than him I always heard about his stories you know him growing up and him being in the NFL it's okay so you know now there's two Levines and one of them has to be better than the other one so I think I put that upon myself <laughs> yeah I, I tell people all the no, time yeah we work out a lot I, I tell people all the time that like if they looked in the dictionary about a gym rat, what a gym rat really is, your picture would be in there because you work extremely hard. <laughs> you love to play. You know, you, 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 you always are in the gym working on your craft and it shows every single year that you've gotten better. And that's a testament to your hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's what it's all about, man. And, um, you know, that's what got me here. And I told my dad that the other day, he, he, I called him uh, when I was going to the gym. It was like 11 to 12 o'clock. He said, man, you got a game tomorrow. Go to, you know, you got to get your rest. I mean, this is all I know. You you taught me this. So um, <laughs> it's something It's something that ju it's just instilled in me. Um, like you said, you try to work on something each and every day. And, it, you know, what drives me is I want to be the best Zach Levine I can be. Um, I'm not trying to compare myself to other people. But as, as long as I put the work in and I can get myself to be the best player I can be, I think I'm going to be in a good spot. Talked about the roster being turned over, but it seems like instantly the chemistry is so good with this group. I mean, you had DeMar going down to Champaign when they uh, retired Io's jersey, and I saw you at a yeah. at a Windy City Bulls game uh, cheering on your buddy Perry yeah. on Calendred. You guys, you guys yeah. are really close, and I think I think that really shows. Are you surprised at how well this group has come together so quickly? A little bit, yeah, because you know, obviously, me and DeMar got to know each other um, pretty fast, but the whole group you know, is really in sync. Um, there's no egos on the team. I think that's what's really, that's what's been really big. Um, everybody wants everyone to be successful. And, you know, we truly care about how we, you know, how we play and, you know, our careers moving forward. Um, very, very selfless team. And for a team that just got together, like you are saying, there's only two guys that's, that's been here and really know each other, you know, outside of me, Kobe and Pat, you know, Pat was a rookie last year, but, you know, this is a brand new faces and everybody genuinely cares for each other. And, and will sacrifice minutes, shots, uh, roles. You know, I think that's that's big, and you know that doesn't go seen in the media, but it is, it definitely shows. The one thing you know we we asked Demar last you know last week was you know what what is his game? We know he's got one of the best mid range games in the, in the in the league. I mean, arguably the yeah. best. And yeah. what do you think he needs to work on? And you know, he said, "Well, I like to be a better three point shooter." Zach, you work on your game. Your game evolves every year. What part of your game do you see that you can actually get better? Now, we, we already talked about your defense already getting better. But let's say mm -hmm. offensively, where, where do you think, because you can get your shot on anybody in the league, but what part of your game would you really think you need to work on to take you to even another level? I feel like the next thing that, that, that 
I want to start implementing to my game is two things. Um, one is like that mid range post up game. I have a mid, you know, the mid range like jump shots and step backs. I've always had that, but you know, going back and my idols were Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Like they had that in the playoffs where you can give it to them in an isolation situation on the block or on the post. That Demar is so. I think even going into next summer, I'm gonna you know link up with him because he's one of the best guys in that position. His patience. Um, and being able to create a shot off of that, make a double team come. Uh, the other thing is uh, passing wise, being able to manipulate the defense just by like your gravity. You know, me get to a certain spot and understand, okay, the help side is coming from, you know, the bottom. I can see Vooch, you know, if he pops or if I got to hit the roll man or swing it to the corner. I think that'll be the next thing to where, you know, I can really start manipulating the defense with my passing. Zach, we don't want to spend any time at all talking about the game against Brooklyn last night. That's one of those you kind of just take it and flush it. But, you know, pe- <laughs> people are quick to forget you beat the Brooklyn Nets in the two earlier meetings. So, you, we, we, Hey, look, we got the split. We got the split on them. So that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, the one thing that really struck me, I don't know if you caught this, but Kevin Durant in his comments post game said that we were really hyped to win this game because, A, they beat us two times earlier, and B, the crowd is hyped. He said the crowd at the United Center is really into it. The city is getting behind the Bulls, and and that got us fired up. Can can you feel that as a player? And you sense that something special is really building here? Yeah, especially with me being here the last four or five years. Um, you know, there was excitement for certain games, but, you know, each and every game and even around the city walking around or hearing people, you know, they'll beef their car at you. You know, everybody's into it and they understand what's going on um, and very supportive. And this is a – this is a big time sports town. I mean, Stacy could talk to it more than I can because it's a uh, you know, it's one of the best you know franchise in NBA history, and I think that we have to uphold that. And the fans and the city deserve to have a winning basketball team here. When you when you look at all the superstar players, because you know you guys talk, everybody talks. You all are friends. Everybody talks. What is, what is what are the guys talking to you now about now that you're on a that you're on a team like this? Because before you know you you would get thirty and then we lose. You know, but now. Yeah. You're killing. You're still killing. Demar's killing. The Bulls yeah. are killing. What What are the players talking to you about? And saying, Zach, boy, you boy, y'all got championship. Team. What are they talking? Because <laughs> I know they talk. It goes from being recruited to now you can be uh, be the one recruiting people. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's that's the, that's the difference. More people are interested. Um, you know, they're 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 really they're they're everybody understands what's going on. You can see the winning mentality and. Like I said, I think that's what players understand is the sacrifice, you know, that people are, you know, that that we show on this team. And there isn't any egos and, and players understand that and see that and they they appreciate it. And, um, you know, now now also it's in the middle of the game, you know, it's, uh, you know, we'll we'll be up by 15 points and, and tomorrow will be in the game and I'll be in the game. They, they got to pick, you know, because usually one of us has the best player guarding us best defender guarding us now they have to pick and, and pick their poison so I think that's been the hardest hardest thing defensively for teams because they don't know how to they don't have to defend it yeah it's too bad that, that KD signed that extension with the Nets because you know you got you and him got to be good friends at the Olympics and he, he's, <laughs> he seems to, he seems to like what's going on in the city of Chicago any way we could uh we get him over here to play with the Bulls <laughs> I don't know about that one because KD does like the the spirit of competition too. So it's, it's yeah, uh, you know, KD, 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 we don't be seeing him in a in a Nets uniform for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can tamper. I know you can, but I can yeah, tamper. you can yeah. So so we asked Demar the same question: taking taking yourself, taking Demar out the out the picture. Which mm-hmm. Bulls player has been the most that you have never seen that you didn't you didn't really know about has surprised you the most on this roster? With the way they play, oh. their style of play, or how whatever whatever you have made you say, wow, I didn't even know this guy was that good. There's a couple guys. Um, oh, that's tough, man, because it's a brand new roster. I mean, the one that sticks out the most is Caruso to me, probably. <laughs> yeah. Like I knew, I knew, I knew Vooch was really good. You know, when he because we, we played against, him, he gave us forty. You know, like we, you know, Vooch was a multiple time All Star. I knew I knew Zoe was really good. Like I played against him, you know, growing up and then in the league. Like it's like, okay, this guy has high IQ. He can play defense. But Caruso, man, I, I that dude is he is a winning player, you know, to the top and the bottom, because he uh he makes a difference. And um 
trying to valet my car right now. <laughs> <laughs> he he makes he makes a big he makes a he makes a big difference um, defensively and and uh, just the way he talks, man. He he's in our huddles. He can damn he could damn near go through our own. He could damn near go through a scout for us um, and, and be like one of the assistant coaches. That's how smart he is. Um, and then the other guy, well, I, like I said, would be probably Javante. Javante, Javante. I'm, we're extremely lucky to have a guy like Javante Green on our team um, yeah, that can take the brunt of you know guarding multiple positions, and a guy who really can score the hell out of the ball. You know, in in practice or in these little scrimmages, you'll see Javante go out there and dunk on everybody, score, and he'll be the leading guy on <laughs> on the other team and scoring. And then in the game, we'll just go and guard everybody, get steals, pass, cut, make all the right plays. So. I feel like those two impressed me the most by far. Hey Zach, I know you're you're a big uh, Las Vegas Raiders fan. How do you like their chances yes, against I, the yeah, Bengals you, this week? Yes, I, yes. I see on Twitter Zach. always it's always Zach. talking about the Raiders. <laughs> it was a good run, Zach. It's a good run, Zach. They're done. Put a fork hey, man, in look, them. We already beat we already beat Cincinnati earlier this year. The only time I didn't tweet this year is when we played the uh, when we played the. Uh, <laughs> The Bears. That was the one time I made sure I didn't tweet or say anything because it was a win-win for me either way. <laughs> no, I'm excited, man. We uh, we ain't been in the playoffs in a while, so you know I'm looking forward to seeing how we do, man. I've been I've been uh, living and dying with the Raiders since I was a kid. So that's awesome. That's awesome that you're a big fan, but unfortunately they're they're done. Jamar Chase. Come on, man. Huge game. <laughs> that's going to be a high scoring Joe, game. I Joe, Joe Joe Barrow. Joe Barrow pulled out the cigar about third quarter. It's over. It's over. Thank. Do you want you want to put some money on that stage? Hey, we'll talk about this. Up, we'll talk about this when I see you at the game. We'll, okay, we'll put cool. that little All side right. bet. <laughs> hey, the other thing I want to ask you about, Zach, how how involved are you in wedding planning? Is that something that you get responsibilities for? With wedding planning, yeah, uh, no, that's 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 all my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all that's all that's all my wife. I'm I'm. She she she'll do all the wedding planning. Uh, she'll do she'll do all that. I think I'm just the billfold for it. <laughs> and, and you just show up wherever you're told. I'm, I'm going to show up and say yes, and we're going to have a hell of a time. <laughs> now, tomorrow you got Golden State. You know, and the last time we played Golden State, um, Steph Curry got off and got off mm-hmm. big time. And I know you guys are looking forward to and looking forward to the challenge because, again, both you team, both teams are two of the best teams in the NBA. And you guys definitely want to come out tomorrow and play well on Friday at home after last night. Yeah. So what's your yeah. game plan going against Golden State? I mean, the hard thing with Golden State, Stacey, and you know this, it's 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 hard to key in on a guy like Steph when their offense is run, you know, through splits and off-screen motion. You know, Steph doesn't have the ball predominantly a lot of the time. He just gets open. So, um, you really, we really just got to go in there and be the more physical team and want it more um, and then make sure that we're, we're keyed in on their plays. We can't get Steph off early. I think that's the main thing. You you really want to try to frustrate him and, and to force him to taking shots that he doesn't want to, um, and try to make somebody else beat you. Because um, then at that point you can tip your hat to if, if somebody else beat you. But can't let Steph get off. Obviously, Wiggs has been playing incredibly well, and and Draymond is the driving force behind all that. So um, we gotta be ready. We understood what they did to us, just like how Brooklyn did. That third quarter was killed us last time we played Golden State. So. I think we got to lock into the third quarters and really understand that's when the game can be won or lost. Zach, a lot of people on the outside are saying that the Bulls could really use one more guy, either a power forward or maybe a really athletic center to help you on the front line. Uh, you guys have done a really good job, I think, rebounding and especially defensively, but do you think you could use a, a little boost as we get closer to that trade deadline? Uh, I mean, you never know, man. It's the trade deadline. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I switched my cap over to where I'm just a player, and I I, I try to figure that out because regardless whatever happens front office wise, we got to be the ones out there and figure it out. So, um, I want us to get all back healthy again first and <laughs> yeah. foremost. You know, obviously with Pat being out with his wrist injury, really really set us back a little bit because I definitely think that would have helped out a lot athletically and being able to switch and rebound. But um. I mean, I'm 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 ready for, I'm ready for the challenge. If, if we don't if we don't get somebody that because we are a little small at times, but you know we could try to use that to our advantage. Uh, and I'm up for the challenge either way. Well, Zach, we appreciate you coming on. I'm just glad you made it home safely and you're getting ready to valet your car. So everyone knows that Zach didn't crash his car while he was talking to Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast to Stacey King. 
Multitask, man. I appreciate y'all letting me be on here, man. Good hey. luck tomorrow, boy. I'll see you at the uh, UC. Hey, Zach, you know, everybody who right, appears on the show gets uh, Stacy's signature sauces. This guy's a, a business inter- ent- entrepreneur. Uh, he's doing a great job yeah. with uh, with his sauces, so we'll make sure that he brings those to the Oh, game yeah, for you'll it, get right? some of my hot sauce, boy. Yeah, man, I need some of that. Give me, uh, put it on my Harold's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's good on it's good on Harold's chicken, boy. There we go. <laughs> Zach, right, thanks a lot. Guys. Best of luck coming up in the, all the big games coming up this weekend. Our special guest, Zach Levine, on Give Me the Hot Sauce. We got more to come. Stay with us. Windy City Limousine provides championship service. Making a reservation is so easy, it's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the full core pressure of traffic and get you to your destination in style and on time. Contact us at 866-94-WINDY. That is 866-94-WINDY. And remember, she'll like it too. Great catching up with Zach Levine. It's been fantastic having Damar and Zach on the show over the last couple of weeks. You know, Stacey, I was looking at the comments section on, on YouTube, and people really enjoyed last week's show. And one of the things that I saw was that they really liked your football acumen, uh, showing off your football knowledge. And we got we got a lot of important things going on, yep. starting here in Chicago with the Bears looking for a new coach and a new general manager. I know the, the press conference that George McCaskey did Monday almost bordered on the comical at times, but they've got to get it right this time. And, and hopefully they take their time, do their due diligence. I know they got Bill Poley and the Hall of Famer involved in trying to help them with the search. Maybe that will lead to getting the right people in here. Mark, uh, up, upper management approves of the job he's done. Of who? McCaskey. That's Wait, what is, that's his mom. Yes. Well, they're not, that, they're that, fire, that's they're gonna, that's they're upper fire a family member. <laughs> that was the best. Gonna, hey, son, you suck. You're fired. Get your stuff and get Go out. Go to your room. You're, yeah. not getting, you're not getting dinner. Done. No, that was no. the best. I got to know from my mommy that I'm doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. <laughs> nah, that's not going to work, Whispers. I, I'm going to tell you what, though. I mean... I don't even know. If, I mean, Bill Polian is a good football guy, but I, it's one of those things, Mark, where the games pass certain guys by. He and wanted he, Lamar Jackson to be a receiver. Man. Yeah, he You're, wanted Lamar. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he yeah. wanted. He wanted. He was the guy that he wanted was Lamar. The guy, yeah. yeah. So that tells you right there, Bears fans, what <laughs> <laughs> that we might Chuck got. Duck. Wait, we might got Doc Brown working for us in the front <laughs> office. <laughs> He's still looking for a thousand gigawatts. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, Marty, we gotta find it. You know. So, so that right there, as serious in a nutshell, tells you. Yeah. The game has passed some of these guys by. You got to get more innovation in the front office. You got to get more innovation in the way you think and how you want your team to be. Like, what do you want to be? Because the monsters of the midway, that's that's kind of like that's gone now. You know, they're not the monsters anymore because it, it was based off their defense and the way they played, and that carried over to their offense the way they played because they played physical, smash mouth football. So they were actually monsters. They haven't been that in a while. The defense has been really good. And very adequate. But the offense has been what's really held them back and kept them down from being a, a very good football team. And then coaching. You know, you had Tressman experience. That, that that was a disaster. You know, and then you had John Fox, who I thought did a decent job. But then again, he's not making all the football decisions to bring in. You know, he's a football guy. He knows who he wants out there. They didn't give him the, the leeway to do what he wanted to do. And then you go out and get the, the hot prospect. You know, Matt Nagy. Oh, he's he's a, he's a football genius. But he wasn't calling the plays. Yeah, Andy yeah, Reid was yeah, calling the plays. Yeah, Andy Reid was calling the plays. And that's yeah. what you got to worry about if you're looking for any assistance from Kansas City. You know, how much do they really know? You know, how much do they really, how much did they really, the input did they really put into game plan and, and calling games? Because Andy Reid is a, is also an offensive genius. A lot of, you look at his tree, he has a lot of offensive minded guys that come off his tree. Like Belichick has his guys, you know, Bill Walsh had his guys. Andy Reid has his guys as well. But at the same time, he's a guy that calls all the plays. You know, he may say, okay, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, Four plays. Show me what you got. <laughs> you, yeah. You're three and out. Okay, you're not calling any more plays. Give me that book back. All right, I'm gonna call him the plays. That kind of thing. Yeah. But back to the Bears. You you've got to get 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 into the new era of football. You know, it, it's wide open. You need offensive line. Before offensive linemen were were just the grunts. You didn't pay them what they're paying them now. They're making quarterback money now. So you got to come in and get with the times and protect your asset, which is Justin Fields. Justin Fields can be a superstar quarterback. He's shown you as a rookie the flashes that he can be great. 
He has the confidence, the swagger. He can throw any throw out there. He's athletic. He can run like, you know, Lamar Jackson, but he's a he's a guy that wants to stay back there and pass. So how do we, how is the Bears front office and coaching staff, how do we make this better? How do we enhance that? You got to start with the offensive line because if you got a good offensive line, this kid can throw. You got your running game going to take some pressure off of him. You know, you, as soon as you hike the ball, there's like five people in the backfield. You right. know, I mean, the running back can't get through a hole because it's clogged. The quarterback is running for his life. And then you had him running Andy Dalton plays. Stay in the pocket. You know, the Red Rocket did it. You stay here. No, man, you got to have a playbook for this kid. You, you should have, when you drafted him, you should have had a playbook just for him. They didn't want him to play. The plan was for him to sit all year and watch Andy but Dalton. But you know, you know this game with injuries. Yeah. I mean, you know, Andy Dalton is is not the most durable guy. There's been Nick Foles was not the most durable guy. Those guys, and it's not their fault because when you don't have an offensive line, what do you expect? They are going to get hurt. You know, so 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 you had to play that kid early. But when you were preparing for him to come. Why not have a, a, a little package for him? Why not have him, you know, a third down package where we bring him out there and give him a couple plays and see what he can do? You know what I'm saying? Are you expecting to win this year? Or are you saying we're not expecting to win? Well, Matt Nagy was trying to save his job. That's why he's going to go with the veteran. Well, you know what? You Didn't work saved, out. should have saved your job with playing this kid from the start. Right. Then people would have saw what the future looked like, and people wouldn't be saying fire the coach. They'd be like, hey, you know what? He's got a quarterback now to run his system, and I like what we see. We're not winning, but we're competitive. The, as I mentioned, the press conference, and you know, it was almost an hour <clears> long, and, and some of the things that George McCaskey said were just borderline ridiculous. I mean, he said, I'm not a football evaluator, I'm a fan. Okay, then why are you the chairman of the board, and why are you involved in interviews to hire your football people? I mean, Bill Polian, he's, I think he's 79 years old, and, and you can argue that, yeah, maybe the game has passed him by, but at least he has a football background. He's hired guys that have been successful in the league. They're going to have five people in that interview room, Stacey. It's going to be it's going to be George McCaskey, Ted Phillips, Bill Polian, and two people uh, on the business side and, and and diversity side. And it's like you're going to have five people. If you're coming into an interview like that and you see five people across the room, what does that say to you? Who's in charge? Well, here? <laughs> yeah, who's in charge? You know, I mean, and it's and it's when you're looking at it as a coach, it's very unstable. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're there's guys in that room who are not football guys, right? Who do you know, I report to? Yeah, Who's he, yeah, there's guys who are business guys that run the business side. That's why they run the business. And then there's guys who are football guys that are paid to be, you know, football evaluators, talent evaluators, coaches, general managers. And that's what you do. But at the same time, you know, like it, it just came off kind of comical. Like I know someone has to do that interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you, you pretty much fired everybody else. There was no one else to do it. I mean, they probably should have went and got the guy that tapes ankles and said, Hey Bob, you know, you're around the football team a little bit more than I am. How about you go out there and talk about the team, what we need. Bob, the trainer comes out there. Uh, well, we just need to just blow this whole thing up, you know, and we all would have respected that, but to sit there and, 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 you know, and just kind of be like, like it was no big deal. Like, Oh, we got this covered. And, and it's the same people making the same decisions every year, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're, you're kind of like in the, in the shadows and now everyone knows who are making decisions. And it's like, that's what, this is the reason why we're not able to compete. This is the reason why we can't get quality guys. This is Chicago. And I said this even about the Bulls. The Bulls were bold. The Bulls are tired of losing. The Bulls are tired of putting the team out there and, and not competing because this is a championship organization. There's banners hanging up there. Those banners are not that old, okay? And they want to ascend back to that. They want to be relevant again. So what did they do? They went out. They changed the front office. They made some changes. Change is good. They got a coach in here that is well-respected, that can get to these players, which we have seen. Billy Donovan is a great coach. He's probably one of the top five coaches in the NBA, and the players have responded to him. This has been the quickest turnover I've ever seen. I mean, any team bringing in all these new players to be number one in the uh, number one in the Eastern Conference, top two in the NBA with so much turnover is impressive. So if you're the Bears, you might be looking at this is what the Bulls did. The Bulls made some changes that probably at the time were not popular, but you bring in guys who know their craft, that know what they want to do. You give them full car blanche. Here's the keys to the car, the keys to the vault. Do whatever you need to do to get this thing around. We're not worried about money. We're not worried about any of that. Just turn it around. But the Bulls did it the right way. They brought in their head of basketball operations and Arturus Karnishevis, and then he went out and got the best coach available in Billy Donovan. 
You looked at what the Cubs did. They brought in Theo Epstein, who brought in Joe Madden. There's a there's an order you're supposed to do this. And right now, we're seeing the Bears are interviewing head coaching candidates. Whispers, I think they might hire a coach before they hire the GM. And that's backwards, which mm-hmm. shows they're that's, never going to get anywhere do. if they keep doing things backwards. Yeah, and, and two separate guys at the same time yesterday. Right. The guy from Cleveland and... Well, and they uh, bring Doug in Doug Peterson, Peterson who's yeah. who's a Matt Nagy clone. I mean, yes. those guys are best friends. Yeah. I mean, how are you going to sell that to your fan base? Yeah, yeah no. I don't well, think he's going to get well, the job, gonna, but it's they're crazy. Gonna, they're selling that is because he's, uh, what is it, a Super Bowl winner? You want a Super Bowl yeah. in Philadelphia. Oh, you yeah. want a Super Bowl, you know. And with Nick, Nick Foles. Foles. <laughs> Nick Foles is his quarterback. Okay, but listen, at the at the end of the day, there's a lot of talented guys out there that, that are available. But I think right now the goal is to get the right football people in the front yeah. office in place. And because, then hire your coach. And then hire your coach because... Because then what happens is you hire the coach first and then you hire the GM and then you're going through this whole process again four or five years right. later because the GM says this was not my guy. Yeah. This was not my guy yeah. and I we, I can't work with him. There's yeah. a power struggle. So you have to get the right people in the front office first before you hire the coach and then everybody in the front office has to be on board with this is our guy. This is our guy to lead our football team and then this is the staff. And sometimes, Mark, uh, in, in these big organizations like this, you have to do a complete overhaul of everything. Scouts, everything. Right. And so I've always said, like, if I if I was an owner of a team, and I like I, I can only use the NBA. So if I was the owner of an NBA team that's constantly, like Sacramento, who's constantly in the bottom every and yeah. never winning, but has the first picks all the time. Why are we not winning? What's what's the problem? So now you look within this. Is it the players you can't blame the players? Is it the coach? You fired a coach after two years, everything. So there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unstable ground. So now you got to start saying to yourself, let me look at San Antonio. Let me look at the teams that are consistently winning. Why are they winning? They're winning because they got a good front office and they're winning because they got a good head coach and they're playing. Talent evaluation. It's almost like the New England Patriots. Like New England, everybody thought, oh, New England's done, Tom Brady. They they were down a year. They were down a year. They went out and got a rookie quarterback and now look at them. They're in the playoffs now, getting ready to get in the playoffs. So you got to have some kind of structure and sometimes you got to you gotta say, hey, look, all these people that are working, you know, are not doing their job. Why are we not, why is our talent not you know, coming out and to fruition like everybody else's. What's the problem here? So maybe it's our scouting. Maybe it's, you know, the general manager. Who knows? But you sometimes you got to make a whole overhaul on everybody. It's going to be an expanded NFL playoffs this year. Only a one buy for each conference, Green Bay and the NFC, the Tennessee Titans and the AFC. So we get a super wild card weekend, which includes a game Monday night, three on Sunday and two on Saturday. Let's uh, let's go through them real quick, Stacey. Yeah. I think the the, the Kansas City Pittsburgh game is a slam dunk. Big Ben gets his gold watch and in one last game and gets to get his ass kicked by the by the Chiefs on the way out. That, that's going to be ugly, won't? You know what? I don't know though. I Big don't ben. know. Big Ben he might move hey, anymore. Big, Big Ben might pull one out of the bag, man. You know they could be motivated to win. You know everybody counting them out. They had to wait to the last game to see if they were going to get in. And it, the probability was like very slim and they ended up getting in. Okay. Yeah, that, and so they were happy about it. And so they're going on the road. They're playing outdoors. It's going to be cold in Kansas city. They're used to it, that in Pittsburgh, Kansas city has not played like Kansas city. They went through a stretch where they played bad in the beginning and then they got hot and then they lost a couple of games. Right. Guys were out with, you know, the, the COVID, um, they're still a dangerous team. I still think they're going to win, but I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people think. Speaking of that, how about that game on uh, Sunday night with the Raiders and Chargers? Oh. If they had tied, both of them would have gotten in the playoffs. Yes. Pittsburgh would have been out, and it looked like the Raiders were playing for a tie at the end, and then the, the Chargers coach calls a timeout, and they go, oh, what the hell? We might as well kick a field goal and knock you guys out. Wow. That was crazy. Yeah. Wow. That was just bizarre. You know, America... Brandon Staley, genius. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he might. If I'd have been the owner, if I'd have been the owner, Mark, he might have had a pink slip. And we need to talk to you. And earlier in the game, you went for it on fourth down, and I think they're on their own eighteen yard line. I mean, like, what are you doing? But, yeah, we, but, we but, might need it. We might need to talk, Mister. But Staley. that's his problem. Hey, and the AFC Buffalo against New England again. New England kind of limped to the finish line. Who do you think wins that game? Third time. Buffalo's going to win. Buffalo, yeah. they're it's playing in Buffalo. In Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be tough. Saturday to night, it'll be cold. It's going to be tough to beat them. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't count, you know, Bill Belichick having something that keeps his team involved. Their defense has been really good, but you're relying on a rookie quarterback coming in hostile territory. They just beat them, you know, and so that could be on their mind as well. 
about the Raiders Cincinnati. That could be a wide open offensive game. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. That's become quite a great passing. Cincinnati combination. is fun to watch. Yeah, they, they are. are. They, they are. are explosive on offense, and when they are explosive on offense, they can beat anybody in the league. It's when. They are not explosive when you have to worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when they when they have a struggle, you know, move the football and their running game is not because Joe Mixon has been in and out of the lineup. You know, he's got to be healthy. If he's not healthy, their running game suffers big time. And then you put all the pressure on Burrow to have to make plays. Chase is a dynamic wide receiver, probably one of the best young wide receivers in the game right now. There's a ton of them too. Um, but you know, if they get if they get connected like they've been doing, it, it could be a long, long day. <laughs> NFC, the 2-7 matchup, Tampa Bay, the defending Super Bowl champions hosting the Eagles. I don't think Philly has much of a shot in that one. <sighs> don't, don't count them out, man. Because Dallas is like... Oh. No, they play Tampa. Oh, they play Tampa? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, Tampa. Tom Brady. No one's beating Tom. Tom's yeah. Tom will be in Lambeau <laughs> Field when it's all said and done. Yeah. It's going to be the same matchup it was last year for the NFC Championship. Yeah. And Tom is going to be facing Aaron Rodgers at the end. Cowboys get the 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo and company got in by rallying to beat the Rams in the last week. Well, you know what? <laughs> dusted off my Cowboy gear. You know, I was a Cowboy <laughs> fan growing up being in Oklahoma, so I had to dust it off, you know. Um, but they're so unpredictable. Like, one week they look like the best team in the NFL, yeah, and yeah. then the next week they look like they shouldn't even be in the playoffs. Turn the ball over, can't move the ball. So if they come out and do what they're expected to do, they got one of the best offensive lines in the game. And it's like, man, when Dak is on, Dak is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But when Dak is off, I mean, it's just, it's like they don't have a chance to win. Yeah, they're not beating 49ers. You don't think so? 49ers no. were good late in the season. Yeah, with, with were they playing in Dallas, and, right? I mean, Dallas. Samuel yeah. Kittle back, and that's tough. Yeah, Debo Sanders. I mean, they. They. I mean, listen. I. But you're still putting the ball in, in Jimmy Garoppolo. Debo's hands. great. You know, he, yeah. he's he's they, become one got, of the best. Yeah, receivers one, yeah, in the he's NFL. one of the best receivers in the game. But you're still putting the putting the the onus on Jimmy Garoppolo to win the game for you. And what if the game is on the line? You know, I mean, those little short passes to Kittle. Listen, Dallas' defense is phenomenal. You know, right. they, they, they got the Diggs kid. He's yeah, got Micah like 20, 20 interceptions. Yeah. Parsons, who's one of the best young defensive linebackers in the game, can run down any quarterback, put pressure on you, whether he's playing defensive end or whether he moves to the outside slot on linebacker. He is a beast. Their defense is unbelievable. They got great, you know, secondary. But the problem with Dallas is, it's like, which team is going to show up? Is it going to be the Dallas that everybody predicted that would be going to the Super Bowl this year early on? Or is it going to be the Dallas Cowboys that's like, wow, this team is like, you know, underachieving. In the last game, Monday night, the the Rams are playing the Arizona Cardinals. That should be a good game. I, I you know... <laughs> Both of those teams are scary, and it's sad they have to play each other in a wild card game because I would love to see those guys play anybody else because they're, they're both explosive. But if Hopkins is not back for Cardinals, I don't know if he's back, but if he's not back from injury, that's a big blow for them because that is their guy that can take the mm -hmm. top off the defense. He's their possession receiver when they need third and long. You can always go to him because he's got the best hands in the league. But the Rams right now, I mean – they Cooper, need a Cooper, Cooper, who? The Rams need a quarterback. No, no, I'm, I'm going with Stafford. <laughs> Stafford, he, Stafford listen, yeah. I've seen enough of that. <laughs> listen, <laughs> he doesn't know what the playoffs are like. See, He's going to yeah. experience the it problem for the first with time. the problem with Stafford is is he he locks in on Co Cooper Cup so much, right? Okay, and there's other guys on that field. He's got to in the playoffs. He's got to spread that that ball around because. I mean, every single, I mean, Cup is a great receiver. I mean, I think he won the triple crown, the yes, receptions, did, yeah. touchdowns. Yeah. You know. Um, you got to spread that ball around the playoffs. You cannot just be one dimensional trying to get cup. You know, cup's your guy when I need, when the third and 10, that's the guy I'm looking for. I need a touchdown. I'm going to him. But you've got to move that ball around because their defense, the Cardinals defense is pretty good. Yeah. And they got some really good JJ Watt's supposed to come back. Chandler Jones. I mean, they got a defensive line that can put pressure on the quarterback. And Matt Stafford hasn't proven to anyone that he can win in the playoffs. Because he's you, never been, right? There you go. Yeah, you got your Super Bowl uh, acumen from Stacey King here. So America, go out and uh, bet You're wisely. Yeah. You're welcome. America. Super wild card weekend. You're welcome. Hey, we want to thank Zach Levine for joining us on the show. We had a lot of fun today. As always, we've got many more great guests coming up in the future. I want to thank our guy, DJ Pavel, for running the board today. Always a blast. And we'll be coming at you again next week with a brand new show. Stacey, bring us home. Drive home safely, Chicago. Beep, beep. <laughs>